Welcome to the OpenStack Summit, April 2013. Uh, this is, a, I think, a great example of the power of OpenStack. How many open source projects have their own hip hop group? Not a lot. Although, you know, I do remember them before they went corporate. And I think, you know, some of their original stuff was really good. But. So, uh, I'm Jonathan Bryce, and uh, I'm the executive director of the OpenStack Foundation. And um, I am going to uh, cover a few things this morning and have some special guests up here. And I think we're going to have a, a really good morning with uh, a lot of good speakers who are going to talk about what people are doing with OpenStack out in the wild. It's going to be really exciting. Um, but first, uh, a few housekeeping items. So these are your badges. A lot of the information that you might have a question about is going to show up on the back of that badge. If you uh, are wondering how you get to the Wi-Fi, um, where the parties are, everything is on there. Uh, you can see that uh, a lot of that's on, on the badge here. This upper area, registration, um, general session hall, uh, most of the, the events are happening downstairs. That's where the food is, the expo hall, the breakout sessions, and the design summit. Um, and I think you know, that's, that's uh, pretty much it. Keep it simple. How do you guys like the hoodies this time around? Yeah. It's a little different. We've done a lot of t-shirts, so we decided to do a hoodie. Uh, did anybody find the Easter egg on the back? The OpenStack itself is made up of uh, all of the places where we have OpenStack user groups. And uh, I think this just goes to show that OpenStack is made of users. <laughs> and this is, um, I think, you know, really an homage to what we're trying to do. We're trying to build great software as a community and, uh, and get it deployed all around the world. Um, you know, just one other thing before we get the day kicked off. We are a global community, and in the last day, there have been a couple of tragedies. Uh, you probably have all heard about Boston, and uh, overnight there were some earthquakes in India and Iran, and we have, uh, we have community members in, in all of those places. And I just wanted to take a moment um, just to pause and, uh, and just kind of, you know, let them know that our hearts go out to all of those who might be affected. So the OpenStack Foundation is a pretty new entity. We uh, have been in existence for just a little over six months, actually. This is the first summit that, that we've uh, put on and funded. And you know, I think uh, it's something where, that has grown incredibly. We have uh, just about twice as many people here as we had in San Diego six months ago. And that's really amazing, you know, doubling in, in six months. And you know, this venue is much bigger. We have a lot more space. I know that some of the rooms are still crowded. We're going to keep working on it <laughs> and uh, keep getting better and better at it. But um, you know, this, is, uh, this is something that's possible because of uh, the support of all of you, all of the individual members, and also the, uh, the corporate members of the foundation and the sponsors of the summit itself. There have been a, a number of things that we've done and, uh, and you know, helped the community to execute on over the last six months. Can't talk about all of them, but I just wanted to highlight a few that I think are really excellent examples of the power of community, of harnessing this worldwide group of people who are passionate about OpenStack, who want to go out and do great things with it. Um, one of the things that, uh, that happened earlier this year was we got a group of people together and uh, put them in a room for a week, and they wrote a book. They wrote the Operations Guide for OpenStack. And this was, uh, this was another great example of just global collaboration. We had authors from Australia, from Canada, from Germany, from the US. They all came together in Austin, Texas. And sometimes, you know, Texans think that's a country of its own as well. So you could add that to the count, perhaps. Uh, and in a week, produce this, this book. So it was, uh, it was really, a, I think, a, a great thing that, um, that uh, came out of this. And you can find this on our, on our docs site. You can find links to it. And um, we've had uh, thousands of downloads from over 100 countries around the world. So this is already uh, getting a lot of great information into the hands of users all over the planet. Um, another program that we started was the, uh, the GNOME Outreach uh, for Women, which this is a, a, a program that the GNOME Foundation organizes, and they go out and they work with different projects to, um, to sponsor interns and to, uh, to bring women into uh, different technology projects. And we had three interns that have been working with OpenStack, and it's, it's been awesome to see them get involved in the project, 
make contributions to code, help with documentation. Um, these, uh, these three women are, are in uh, locations around the world and they're here this week, so um, they're doing a session and I hope that you can, uh, you can find them and talk to them and hear about their experiences. It's also been helpful to hear what it's like for people to come and try to get in, involved in the community. So that was uh, another thing that, uh, that I think we did that was, that was pretty great. And then um, for uh, other news, to hear about um, what we're doing, to tell us what you think we should be doing, we're doing an open house on Thursday afternoon after we, uh, after we kind of wrap up the summit. It's gonna be across the street at the Spirit of 77. It's on, on the bottom of your badge. So we hope to, see, uh, hope to see a lot of you there. Come and bring your questions, your suggestions. So we're, I think we're calling it the open mic night. So if you wanna do a, a, a little poetry, you're welcome to do that too. And, uh, and I think it'll be a, a good time. Um, you know, about six months ago, we had a peaceful transition of power, so to speak, over to the foundation for the, uh, for the OpenStack project. And it was something that a lot of people said, you know, this is really risky to go create a foundation. This project has a lot of momentum. Is it going to throw it off? I think we've seen that that has not been the case. And I just wanted to take a moment to, uh, to, to kind of mention another peaceful transition of power that just happened in the last month. We've had some technical leaders that have really um, helped to drive OpenStack forward over the last couple of years. And uh, four of them in this last uh, election for our project technical leads um, stepped aside, and they're still involved in the projects, but they allowed new leadership to step up. And I just wanted to, to take a moment to thank Vish, Brian, Dan, and Joe for the leadership on their respective projects. You can talk to any of them. You know, PTL is a, uh, it's a busy task. It's, it's not, a, uh, not an easy job, and it's one that a lot of times happens behind the scenes. Um, and you know, we now have uh, new leaders that are stepping up, and it really speaks to the depth of our technical bench and OpenStack that uh, you know, this transition has happened, and uh, we have great new leaders in these projects who are working with, uh, with these four still. So thank you to, uh, to you guys. So I just have a few quick thoughts about what we're doing. You know, this is uh, obviously something that's growing, that's big, that has um, a lot of interest around it, and a lot of contribution around it. But uh, you know, what, what is it that we're, that we're really doing here? Because it's not just software. It's not just a great development community. It's not just about having a bunch of companies and vendors involved. You know, all of those things are important. But um, any one of them on their own is not enough. And, uh, and I think that what we're really doing is we're building a new platform ecosystem for the cloud. And so what is that? You know, what is a platform ecosystem? Um, platform ecosystems are what develop when you have a base level of technology that is widely adopted and extensible, and it allows for a lot of innovation to happen around it. Let's do a little audience survey here. So, <laughs> somebody loves surveys. How many of you have a smartphone? All right, so this is uh, most people. Keep your hand up. Yes. All right, so it's pretty much the whole audience. Now, put your hand down if that phone is an iPhone or an Android device. <laughs> Those are platforms. You know, platforms develop in massive markets, and they gain a, a very large share of those markets. You know, um, iPhone, Android, they both have half a billion devices uh, in, you know, in these incredibly large markets. And if we look at, uh, at what OpenStack is doing, we are creating powerful general purpose technology that's also in another massive market. We're talking about every data center and everything in that data center. All of the servers, all of the network devices, all of the storage devices, orchestrating all of that, putting a common API on top of it, letting people extend it, build on top of it, make it more valuable. I mean, that's, that's really incredible to think about what we're doing and what the opportunity is in front of us as, as we do that. When we uh, think about platforms, there are some influencing factors for them. And uh, I like to uh, fly around in little planes. You know, not, they don't have jet engines. But you know, if you've uh, ever studied flight or aerodynamics, there are four forces that act on an airplane that determine you know, if it stays in flight, if it, if it climbs, if it descends, all of those kinds of things, lift, weight, thrust, and drag. And, uh, and when we look at a platform ecosystem, we, we say there are three forces that act within a platform ecosystem. You have to have powerful software, powerful technology. 
You have to have an innovative ecosystem of people who are collaborating around it, who are extending it, who are adding extra functionality, and then you have to have successful users, and users who are out there making use of that platform and, uh, and taking advantage of that ecosystem. We were talking about smartphones a minute ago. You know, that's phone, it comes with an operating system, it probably has the ability to make calls, to send text messages, but what makes it so powerful is, you know, you can get the SCED application on iPhone or Android and see what's going on here this week. You can get games, you can get all sorts of applications that make you more productive or, you know, enjoy that downtime while you're sitting there waiting for the plane to come. And, and these three forces, really, the stronger they are, the more they're focused to the center, the more that platform grows and succeeds, and it, it's like gravity, creates the center of gravity that continues to pull in more innovation, continues to pull in more development, making the software better, continues to pull in more users. So this is, I think, a, you know, a, an important concept to think about and, uh, and something that is really, uh, really applies to what we're doing with OpenStack. So if we were to break this down a little bit and look at each of these forces and look at the way that, that OpenStack plays within them, powerful software. I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with this. If you're not, this is a good place to come and learn about OpenStack and what the software is. We have 250 plus sessions this week along with uh, another couple hundred in the design summit. So this is, this is the place to get your content and learn about this. But OpenStack is software for building public and private clouds and doing it at, at large scale and at small scale. And it's really focused around compute, storage, and networking. And interacting with, with those components, controlling them, making them more efficient and more agile. We just had our seventh release, Grizzly. So this is uh, you know, exciting every time we have a release and then we get to come together to these summits and, and celebrate them. And I think that it's worth pointing out, this is uh, the seventh release that we've done on time with all of the major features. So for almost three years now, We've been doing what we say, and I think that's a, that's a really a, a great mark, especially in the software industry. Um, you know, if we were to look at Grizzly just quickly, we've got some screenshots here. We have a video demo on our website. If you go to openstack.org slash grizzly, and you can check it out in action. But Grizzly has a, has a lot of cool features. I think the block storage environment is really great now. It's, a, it's kind of a true service for storage in the data center. You can manage multiple types of storage behind the, a single block storage service. And, uh, and one API, um, you can manage networks now with a lot of new drivers for a lot of new networking companies, um, software-defined networking, and also kind of traditional networking appliances. The interface for this, uh, this dashboard has improved and has a lot of new capabilities when you're setting up new instances, when you're configuring networks. One of my favorite features is this network topology view, where you can really see a multi-tier application laid out and graphed as you're creating these, uh, these different resources inside of your cloud. So the software, you know, I think has, has come a really long way. And the, uh, the development team has come a long way as well. One year ago, we were in San Francisco, same thing, you know, summit after the Essex release. And we had about 250 developers. Um, they don't all look the same, that was just <laughs> the easiest way to represent them. If you go from Essex to Grizzly, we've gone from 250 to well over 500 developers. I mean, that's really amazing in, in a year. And we've added new projects, and we've had new talent come in, and that's what's powering OpenStack forward. So if, if you're in the room right now and you contributed to Grizzly, stand up. Now let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. I mean, you are, you are making the software and I think that you're gonna be excited to see what we have the rest of the day. So this is, this is great progress on the software front, and that's a really key pillar of, of the forces. If we move on, we're talking about the innovative ecosystem. And when you think about OpenStack, one of the things that a lot of people say is, well, they have all those companies involved. And there's a little bit of irony there because I remember when we were getting going, everybody said, well, there's only one company involved. So we didn't have enough, you know, it was all rack space, but now we have too many, and, you know, it's kind of, it's hard to make everybody happy, right? But the innovative ecosystem is really important in platforms because a platform is a general purpose technology and it has to have a good level of functionality that meets a lot of needs, but, it, but there's never any technology that meets all needs. And a platform enables 
different services, different companies, different software to take that platform and make it really valuable for specific use cases. And, and that's really, you know, very critical. So, you know, we go back to 2010. July of 2010, we were actually in this building on the south side, the south side of the building, and we were um, at OSCON. And that was where we announced OpenStack. And uh, there was, you know, it was an exciting time. People were really excited. We dropped code the day we launched. But then, you know, there was also uh, some skepticism. Does this, does this sound familiar to anyone? This is uh, something that, if you followed OpenStack, you've probably heard this kind of skepticism before. Well, you know, we were, uh, we were talking about other things that happened around the same time frame. And what's interesting is July of 2010, just a few days before OpenStack, just before, you know, we made the decision and announced the decision to open source this software, there was a, another group of industry heavyweights that came together. And they made a decision as well to form up a team, and it was met with the same level of skepticism. <laughs> About three days before we announced OpenStack was when LeBron James announced he was going to the Miami Heat with Dwayne Ray Wade and Chris Bosh. That year they went to the finals. The next year they won the finals. And you know, I have to say, I think we've had some wins of our own. And, uh, and you know, it's really exciting to see, uh, to see how, how we've come together. We were gonna get everyone championship rings, but too many of you came, so we had to go with hoodies. Sorry. Yeah. But really, I think that you know, all of this noise about so many companies involved and the risk and all of that, it's, it's really a red herring. That is, that's driving innovation. We go back to compute, storage, and networking. There is a lot of work to do there. And what those companies are doing is they're bringing in experts, like those PTLs we saw, like the new developers that are here this summit. They're bringing those experts and their domain into OpenStack, and they're contributing code, and they're driving it forward. And that is part of the, the amazing power of OpenStack. And you know, it's not just about the companies, too. And this is one of the things that I've loved to see over the last year or so. Um, we have a lot of open source projects that are aligning themselves with OpenStack, with the way that we um, do our releases, that we do our process. They are tying into our development tools, our um, continuous integration, our testing frameworks. And I think that is, again, it shows the, the power of building a platform like this, not just in the cloud, but with our development processes. And we get innovation all over the place. So that's, that is a, a, such a key part of OpenStack and such a key part of platforms. And finally, you know, the, the real key is successful users. And this is, a, again, you know, an area that I love to talk about, because we have great users. And um, you know, the, we have a lot of them here this, this week. And I love that they come to this because we have empowered users. You know, we have users that are ready to come, engage in a design summit, talk to developers, work with the user committee, and help us all make the software better based off of their experiences. But you know, the, uh, um, one of the things that, that happens is people say when a lot. You know, when are we going to have real companies using OpenStack? And I'm going to make a prediction right now. I'm feeling bold. I think that one day, we're going to see companies in industries that we know about running services that we use every day on OpenStack. I mean, that's what this is doing. This is going into all of those areas. And these companies are going to use OpenStack to power the services that we're using every day. And you know, we like to do time-based releases. We like to put dates on things, and then we like to hit them. So I'm going to put a date on this, on when we're going to hear about these companies doing it. <laughs> yes, right now. We are extremely fortunate to have some users who have come to share their stories today. And, uh, and I think that it's going to be you know, really interesting to hear how they're using OpenStack. And again, you know, these are brands that, that you know, that you interact with. So let's go ahead and, and get started with this. And, uh, um, what we're going to do is we're going to run through a couple of different users and customers here. They've got some great stuff to show. And so I'm going to go ahead and start 